In this video we're going to take a look at the classification of numbers. So there are different ways that mathematicians group numbers together. So we have these different sets of numbers. First of all we have the natural numbers which are represented by this symbol here. So a capital N with a double bar in the middle. And these are the counting numbers. So they're just whole numbers 1, 2, 3 and, and upwards. Um, some definitions include 0. And so on our number line, here we are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and, and just going up. Um, but we might also include 0, depending on which definition we are using. We also have integers. So these are the positive and negative counting numbers, as well as 0. And so we can extend our number line into the negative numbers. We also have the real numbers, uh, represented by this symbol here, this capital R with these double lines. And these numbers can represent any distance along a line. They can be represented as an infinite decimal expansion. So, for example, here, a number that just keeps going with an infinite or unlimited number of decimal, decimal places. So if we were to look at a point on this line, we could measure it to um, an infinite degree of accuracy. We could be anywhere along this line because we've got an unlimited number of decimal places that we can use. OK, we also have the rational numbers and the irrational numbers. Rational numbers represented by this symbol here, this Q with these double lines. Um, these are numbers that can be expressed as a ratio of integers. So there's an example here, 997 divided by 149. So these are both uh, integers. And then we get this ratio. If we calculate this out, we'll see it does have a limited number of decimal places before it just goes to zero. So that is a rational number. Um, it could. Th there are examples where the numbers just keep going on forever as well, so an unlimited number of decimal places. But the important thing is that you can express it as a ratio of integers. Then we move on to the irrational numbers. Uh, these are real numbers that are not rational, so they can't be expressed as a ratio of two integers. And examples include pi, e, and the square root of 2. OK, so if we just think about these different groups and use a Venn diagram, we've got the real numbers, and then a subset of this are the rational numbers, a subset of the rational numbers are the integers, and a subset of the integers are the natural numbers. And we also have the irrational numbers. Now, outside of this grouping of real numbers, we also have something referred to as the imaginary numbers. And these are based on the square root of negative 1. And we often use the symbol i, lowercase i, to represent the square root of minus 1. Now, if we think about our number line, we can't find the square root of minus 1 anywhere on this number line. So we're going to have to do something different. OK, so imaginary numbers are the product of a real number and the square root of negative 1. And as we've said, we use the letter i to represent the square root of negative 1. And so... We have a real number, so for example, minus 3 is a real number, and then we have i. When we multiply those two together, we get an imaginary number. So there's a whole host of different uh, possible imaginary numbers. And 0 is considered to be both real and imaginary. Now, I've already mentioned on the previous slide that the square root of minus 1 can't be found anywhere along this number line of real numbers. So what we need to do is we need an additional number line. And what we have is the imaginary number line, which runs like this. It runs from top to bottom, and we have the real number line running left to right. And 0 crosses at 0i. So at this point, um, the real value of 0 equals the imaginary value of this, and it's basically they're the same number. OK. Then we also have complex numbers, and these have a real part and an imaginary part. So the general form is a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the square root of minus 1. So if we wanted to locate uh, a complex number, we need both an imaginary number line and a real number line. So let's take the example 2 plus 3i, and we have to plot this as a point. We have to now use these almost like axes on a graph. So there's the 2, there's the 3i, and 
uh, complex numbers are two-dimensional numbers. They have two dimensions to them. They have a real part and they have an imaginary part. Okay, so that video has been an introduction to the classification of numbers. I hope you found that useful. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and thanks very much for watching.